live and alert on the north side of the dirt. It is your man D Real coming at you with another Be Real with D Real, or should I say the same Be Real with D Real? What? Hey, have you ever watched some TV shows and they have like a a recap before the show comes on, or they give a explanation of what went on during the season? Well, this is one of those videos because it's going to be attached to another video that I'm pretty sure you need to watch because not a lot of y'all watch it. Uh, I did a series uh, about seven, eight months ago um, on the Black Panther limited series from 1988, 89, um, where T'Challa faced a group of South African superhuman beings who call themselves the supremacists. The supremacists. Late 1980s. South Africa. Apartheid, anyone? Nobody felt bad when these cats got their comeuppance courtesy of T'Challa the Black Panther. It is a story that is illustrated by the legendary Dennis Cowan, who went on to be part of the Milestone Movement. Let's check out that video about Black Panther Limited Series issue number two. Enjoy. Here we are. Enter the supremacists. Who are the supremacists? Let's find out, y'all. Let's find out who they are. And here's the Black Panther for duty, for honor, for country. I like that they got him with those green kind of like cat-like eyes. That would have been pretty cool in a movie, you know what I'm saying, to see him with, you know, green cat-like eyes. Okay, he's the Black Panther. He's in the center of a whirlwind is what they're saying. Uh, here is the story by uh, the arts by my man, Dennis Cowan. Um, and Peter Gillis is the writer. Here is T'Challa sitting, chilling, reading, or not reading, but rather watching the stories about what's going on in Zania and how these people are talking about, oh, this large cat-like, man-like thing jumped on me and beat the daylights out of me. See? Like that. Put y'all all in the hospital. They got they got the child to combine the quarters. You know, he got guards. Like, is there a reason? And they like, yeah, you could take a walk, player, but you know what? We gonna take a walk with you. And as he walks, he sits around and he contemplates. And you can see that look on his face. He got a little sharp tooth there. Has the panther spirit, in fact, deserted him? Is he no longer worthy to be the Black Panther? So this ain't nothing new, y'all. T'Challa has his, 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 his ability, uh, his, his qualifications as a Black Panther have been in question always. He, he's just the type of cat who's always had to prove it. Now, looky here in Azania, what we got going. Okay. We have Vortrekker. We have Captain Blaze. The White Avenger. <laughs> the White Avenger. But Captain Blaze is a little more acrobatic than the White Avenger. And he's coming right at Barricade, who hits him with a force shield. And who is this last fella? One touch, and you will be drained of all power. Courtesy of hunger. And there they are. The supremacists stand to. 
Barricade, white superhero, Vor Trekker, white superhero with a very questionable looking outfit. White Avenger, hmm, how typical. Hunger, Captain Blaze, and Harrier. They want T'Challa. They want to square off with T'Challa for duty, for honor, and for country because they believe that the cat-like thing that's killing folks in Azania is, in fact, T'Challa. Meanwhile, still that apartheid stuff going on, Black folks being mistreated, slapped around the handle, but looky there. Uh-oh, something cat-like hanging in a tree, and we know T'Challa is confined to quarters. So, yikes, look at him, look at him, he's scratching up white people, and the black folks are like, it's the Black Panther, y'all. We gotta help him. Oh yeah, y'all gotta help, all right. Blam, blam. Blam, 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 blam. More people dying at the hands of white folk. This is not going to bode well for T'Challa. And right now, you know, when, when countries are feeling good about themselves, they do, they do a little uh, what they call saber rattling. Chala wants to go. He wants to help the folks in Azania. They don't want to let the child go. Medina said he, he shouldn't go. Funky called Medina and said he shouldn't go because we need to find out if Boss has deserted you. So they like, man, you don't even get to say nothing. Shut your mouth. See, even back then, folks was like, okay, shut up, T'Challa. And then some other folks is like, okay, he can still he can speak. He got a voice. See, they like what he might be lying if the Panther Spirit's abandoning him. Uh-oh, this big buff warrior who looks like Mr. T thinks that T'Challa's fate should not be decided by a bunch of gabbing old women. Tiswana, the powerful, is who he is. We need to see more cats like him. And T'Challa like, all right, all right, Tiswana. All right, you're going to have to get these panther paws put on you, boy. And sure enough, he's trying to handle T'Challa and, you know, big Tiswana, he's doing his thing thing. But, you know, T'Challa is T'Challa. And this cat grabs T'Challa and he's like, oh, King, don't betray me by giving me victory. I don't want to beat you, T'Challa, but I will if I have to. But out of nowhere... The outcome of that match is suddenly stopped because kaboom, what's going on? Yup, yup, the supremacists have arrived. And Tiswano thinks he wants to do something about that, but Harrier is uh, hitting him with his tasers and that's the end of Tiswano. But now they want to act a fool up in Wakanda. And he like, nah, y'all ain't getting ready to do that. Y'all ain't getting ready to do that. I'm the Black Panther, even though they think I ain't worthy. I'm still the protector of this nation. So bring it. And Captain Blaze does indeed bring it. 
and apparently he got hit in the back with some plasma, but he is stopped. He kept moving. He's going through all of the the uh, supremacists, so-called supremacists, and here's Barricade getting ready to hit him with that shield, but T'Challa disappears. Where did T'Challa go? So these cats are going all through Wakanda, him with his strength, Captain Blaze with flame, Barricade with his barricades, and they tearing the spot up trying to find T'Challa, who is currently high. Now, and we go to Malaika, whose name means Angel in Swahili. Um, and she is one of the Wakandan spies in Paris. This is before the, the, the deep operative program, or maybe this is the deep operative program that they talk about in the John Ridley run on Black Panther. So at any rate, here you got these two out in, um, uh, uh, in Paris, and they finding out about uh, this uh, Azanian general who's getting ready to order a strike on Wakanda, but we already see that going on. And my man Moisey, who was trying to help the child and, and caused all the problems, is the one that's out there, you know, trying to trying to get some things going on because uh, he wants to get in touch with the king because he you knows the spy network can get in touch with the king. Meanwhile, Boar Trekker and Harrier, T'Challa's handling him. He threw a rock. He threw a rock at my man. He picked up one cat. That cat got hit with the taser. Then he threw a rock at that cat and dropped him. See? T'Challa's very practical. Now Captain Blaze is burning everything up. And somebody launches a, a missile at him, and he's like, he almost killed a kid. Well, we won't give you a chance to kill any more children, because y'all sure have been killing folks, or y'all been allowing folks to get killed because they ain't white. So the child is like, say goodnight, Gracie. I am a warrior. And here, the strongest one of them all, the White Avenger, who I assume is, you know, some kind of gladiator, sentry, uh, uh, invincible Superman level type superhero, because uh, that's kind of basically what he's saying. No need to hide. You can't hide from my augmented vision. Do you think you can scurry off into your electronic jungle? Like, I am, yeah, he, there it is. He's the most powerful of the supremacists, and there's nothing here that can harm me. See how your technology, look at him. He's raising Wakanda, tearing it apart with his bare knuckles. But there's T'Challa right there, like, and he's teasing. He's, he's irritating him. Ha, if I ever need a lumberjack, I know who to call. And it's just like, it's as if during this issue, he's doing all of the stuff that, um, that he did to the Fantastic Four in issue 52. And, you know, these, these cats is falling for it. So there's my man Hunger, who we know drains powers. What better ability to use on a super, superhuman than uh, to drain his powers? I don't know about y'all, but I think T'Challa is quite well at acquitting himself and being worthy in this issue. And there we go. Barricade's done too. And now the people see it. He's our king. There can be no doubt. T'Challa is our king. And even though T'Challa feels like he's their king, or, or they feel like T'Challa is their king, in his thoughts, here, here it is, it says right here, but in the panther's own breast, a cold ache speaks louder even then his actions, for he realizes he has fought his enemies on their terms. Issues, issues, issues. You know, and they like, yay, T'Challa, you win, buddy. We're going to stop talking smack about you because you can't. look at this person's head. Why is their head so tiny? Come on, Dennis. What's going on with that, Dennis?
And look at look at here what the child is saying. Yep, he's that general is preparing to launch thermonuclear warheads at Wakanda. And T'Challa said he got an announcement that he will be abdicating the throne, even though they celebrate. I will be coming at y'all with another one of them other ones. And until I do, yo, y'all be good. Be good to each other. <laughs>